like motion capture for this role? Full performance capture. So this was, uh, matter of fact, we even were on the same stages as Avatar. So, this chair better not break. That'd be hilarious. Uh, so yeah, it was full face, body, voice, everything it was. It's, it's like the perfect marriage between stage and film because you get that kind of theater in the round feel because all of your cameras are in 360 space, but it's really small grounded performances. So it's it's something that I like as far as an actor. Um, and the reason why is because the normal tools that you have, like, um, okay, let me put on this, this coat and put on that wig and get the makeup and I've got the real sword and everything. All of those things go away and it really is what you quintessentially bring to that character. That's where that performance is driven from. And so you have to kind of strip away a lot of the crutches that you get. Uh, a good friend of mine, Ashley Johnson, says that for her, it's always the shoes. The shoes really help inform that character. If it's high heels, you're going to walk a certain way. So what do you do when you're in, like, you know, Nikes and you're trying to be a ranger from Hunter? You know, it's like, it's it's interesting. Um, but yes, great, great way to start off that. I can just... <laughs> Brian says I don't or that Brian Coney from, from the UK is like shut up <laughs> so are you are you a Lord of the Rings fan in general I am yeah I was, I was just saying that when I was a kid I remember I was like 8 or 9 years maybe 9 or 10 um, and I would go have like sleepovers with my grandparents you know uh, my parents would get tired of me and um, where I slept was like my dad's old room and so there was this bookcase that was up and it had like I mean original like first edition Hardy Boys and there was the Chronicles of Narnia and Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit and I remember asking my dad, I was like, what is that? Because I'd never heard those words before. And he was like, I think it's time. And he pulled down the hobby. He was like, start with this one. <laughs> you know, this little book. You can handle that Lord of the Rings. He's like, ah. Um, and that was like my first introduction. So it's so crazy. Almost you know, 30 years later, that kid, there's no way that I feel looked down and said, this is where I was going to be. And what I love is that on that bookshelf, a small space between where the Hobbit and Lord of the Rings this is where that's that's where that book would sit. Um, and for us to actually add to that lore is uh, that's a big honor. Man. From Talion's perspective, what does he think of Gollum? What do you think, think of Gollum? Yeah. Well, dude, you play the game, man. I don't want to spoil stuff for you. Um, what would anybody think of a creature like that? Pity. Interesting. Interesting. Um, I will say this. Italian is a human, and he is a ranger. There's, there's an element to this of follow me. As we've seen in all of Middle Earth, let me go with that. In all of Middle Earth, there's, there's a huge prevailing element about racism, right? Um, because of this huge cataclysmic event that happened, humans, elves, dwarves, we just don't mix, okay? I think anytime you would have somebody that's outside of your people, something that is as empathetic as pity might not be his first reaction. I danced around that answer. <laughs> that, was like, Met, baby. that was a very good answer. Yeah, that was a very good question. There we go. I, uh, there he's over there going. <laughs> so, so at this point in your career, you voice so many iconic characters. Like, what is it about Talion that really stands out to you? What's it's cool now, man, because we we really started kind of honing in on on what haven't we done. Um, because first of all, for other gamers, are like, oh, he's doing that again. I don't want to. I don't want to be that guy at all. Mm -hmm. And even as an actor, I don't want to be that guy. Yeah. Um, so you start looking for like really cool opportunities of what 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 about this role is different. And that's one of the questions that I ask myself. It's like, okay, is this something that we've done before? Or if it is, how can we put a new twist on this? How can we put a new spin on this? And you know, with, within all of all of the Middle Earth lore, I mean, those even though. Comparatively speaking, to like Odysseus, okay, these are these became templates and iconic characters that informed other characters outside of this specific medium transcendentally. I mean, even for games, especially when I mean, you look at like D and D stuff like that. I mean, that's where a lot of these iconic templates for characters came from. So the conceit. And the temptation, more than that, it, uh, for the character is to, you play this guy like this. He's a ranger. This is who he should be. This is the guy. And you can do that and clearly be successful. But to me, what's more interesting as an actor 
And what's interesting to me as a gamer who's going to sit down and play this game is what's different about this guy. And one thing I was saying over there is that on the surface, yes, this is very much of a re revenge story. That's, that's the most tangible element that you can grab. But revenge is a very short wick. And when you're telling a story over 90 or 120 or 140 minutes, that, that wick is sufficient. Um, but when you're sitting down for 10, 12, 15, 20 hours, or potentially infinite, because you can play this game and it has different outcomes every time, you need something that's that's going to burn a little bit longer than revenge. And I, I think this is a story about identity. It's it's who is Tyan? Who is this wraith that is with him? Who is Gollum? There's all of these things. And because there's such a partnership between the player and me is as, as trying to create these characters and craft characters that you can buy into, it's who do you want Tyan to be? How are you going to play? And that to me is what Next Gen is all about, is, is real emergent gameplay to where I'm not writing the story, but I am choosing how I operate inside of that story. And I get to craft my own experience from that. And you just don't get that from anything else. You don't get that from movies, which are great, and I love movies. But this is something that's really unique to the game space. Cool. Sorry, you're such... Hold on, because okay. you, you have questions too. You've asked two, you little glutton. Oh, I was going to ask. That's <laughs> How much freedom uh, have you had to develop, like, the personality of talent? Mm. It's an interesting word. Um, tons. Um, but what you have to do with that is, is you've got the freedom. You, the Apostle Paul said, all things are uh, permissible, but all things are beneficial. I love that quote. We can do whatever we want, but what, what serves best the game? And that's when you really rely on your team. You've got the platter, who's a genius, first of all, loves the stories so much, um, is committed to the Lord. You've got Christian Contemes, who's an amazing writer and director, and is committed to the Lord as well. So there was a lot of things that were done by committee. Obviously, you don't want to... You want to respect and honor the world that you're operating within. Um, but as far as my, my specific character, we really worked hard on that to to make sure that we weren't being too melodrama, too Fellini, <laughs> you know? Um, because I think it's more interesting when you go, what is he thinking? As opposed to, oh, I know what he's thinking. Uh, so there, that, that's where we kind of skewed more uh, for him. But uh, he's not going to be a guy that tells a lot of jokes, um, even ironic ones. He's not going to put on sunglasses and light a cigarette and you know blow something up. Yeah. <laughs> um, because we've seen that guy. Um, but yeah, I man, I think this is really something, for me, it was very, something that was very, very different. 